Hello everyone. Back again with film recaps. In this video, I'm going to recap one of the thriller horror films from 2023, titled Thanksgiving. Before we get to the storyline, I'd like to wish everyone a happy and great day. Without further ado, let's get straight to the storyline. The movie opens up in Plymouth, Massachusetts, where the entire town is gearing up for Thanksgiving. Even the local sheriff, Eric, is in a festive mood as he visits his friend, Mitch's house for dinner. Inside he meets Mitch's wife, Amanda, and the two engage in a friendly chat. Unfortunately, just when the dinner is about to begin, Mitch announces that he has been called up to work. It is revealed that he is the manager at Wright Mart, one of the largest supermarkets in town, and tonight, the much-anticipated Black Friday sale begins. We then move to a fancier home, where another Thanksgiving celebration taking place. Thomas Wright, the owner of the Wright Mart stores, has organized a grand feast for his family and friends. Thomas's daughter, Jessica, seems to be at odds with her soon-to-be stepmother, Kathleen. Jessica's boyfriend and promising baseball player, Bobby, is also among the attendees. The scene then cuts to the Wright Mart store premises where thousands of people have gathered. They are eagerly waiting for the Black Friday sale, which is set to open in about 10 minutes. Back at the Wright residence, the Thanksgiving dinner appears to be over, and Jessica and Bobby's friends suddenly arrive outside. They are Evan, Gabby, Scuba, and Yulia, they have planned to watch a movie. Before they go, they insult and make fun of their rival school, Hanover. It is revealed Evan is in a relationship with Gabby, while Scuba and Yulia have just started dating. After a while, they are stuck in traffic due to people queuing up for the Black Friday sales. Evan, who is driving, decides to make a quick stop there, so he can replace his old phone. Since Jessica is the daughter of the owner, the kids are granted quick access through the back door. When Bobby is away, Jessica runs into one of her friends, Ryan, who seems to have a crush on her. He attempts to escort her into the store, but Bobby quickly intervenes and takes her away, much to the guy's frustration. Meanwhile, the massive crowd is growing restless by the second. By this time, Sheriff Eric and Amanda have also entered the store to deliver food to Amanda's husband. When Lonnie, one of the students from Hanover, spots the rival kids inside the store, he becomes furious. So, he instigates the crowd, and demands to be led inside. All of a sudden, the barrier guarding the crowd breaks, and thousands of people attempt to rush inside the store. Since the main gate is closed, many people are pressed against the glass wall. This causes a stampede, worrying Mitch and the rest of the guards. But before they can react. The glass shatters, causing mayhem in the store. People are now running haphazardly, and fighting against each other to get their goods. This scares most of the kids and they rush to safety, but Evan climbs onto a table to record the entire thing. He sees this as the perfect opportunity to become famous. As all this is happening, Bobby tries to help the guard who got injured, but someone accidentally stomps on his arm, breaking it completely. Meanwhile, Amanda is also fighting for her life, but as she is trying to get to safety, her head is struck by a shopping cart. Unfortunately, the cart pulls a piece of her scalp, and she dies on the spot. When Mitch notices her lifeless body on the ground, it's too late. After several deaths and injuries, the situation is finally brought under control when Sheriff Eric fires a warning shot in the air. The movie then cuts to one year later, on the eve of Thanksgiving. Evan's video has blown up on the internet, gaining widespread attention. A news reporter states that even after everything that transpired the last time, Wright Mart is once again going ahead with the Black Friday sales. A lot of people are protesting against it, including Mitch, the Mart manager who lost his wife on that fateful day. It is revealed that the Wright family were quickly exonerated by the police after the whole thing was deemed to be an accident. Thomas Wright is now desperately trying to clean up his image by doing charity works, but people still hate him. We also get to know that Bobby suffered a career-ending injury, and he hasn't been heard from ever since. Moreover, the cameras inside the store mysteriously stopped working that night, leading people to believe that they had been tampered with. The next morning, 
As Sheriff Eric and his deputy are at a local diner, the waitress, Lizzie, hands them a John Carver mask. The deputy puts it on, and acknowledges that John Carver was the first mayor of New Plymouth Colony, and he is very popular here, so everyone will be wearing his mask during the holiday. In the next scene, we see the teenagers at a local fair, trying to have a good time. The girls are discussing a mysterious Instagram user, who keeps tagging them in a video of the stampede. Despite reporting the video several times, someone keeps on uploading it and re-tagging them. Jessica then meets Sheriff Eric and her stepmother Kathleen, to go to John Carver House, where an ad campaign for Right Mart will be filmed. But as soon as they arrive, they discover that someone has secretly vandalized the house. Moreover, an axe that was supposed to be used as a prop is also missing. Since the place is regarded as an historical monument, the sheriff takes the case seriously and promises to find the culprit. That afternoon, the group gathers at a diner for lunch. As they are busy conversing, Jessica spots Bobby exiting the door, and she reveals that she hasn't talked to him in over a year. Just then, the entire group is tagged in an Instagram post by someone named the John Carver, mentioning that the table is ready for Thanksgiving dinner, but they don't pay much attention to it. Here we learn that Jessica has just started dating Ryan, she is tired of waiting for Bobby and wants to move on, even though Evan finds the guy shady. At this point, Jessica's feeling some unusual vibes when she spots the masked figure popping up outside, and then the figure disappears. Following this, we are taken to a place where a mysterious man is observing the video of the stampede, he sets his eyes on the local diner's waitress, Lizzie. Elsewhere at the diner, Lizzie is preparing to leave for home. But then, as she approaches the door, she is suddenly attacked by a figure wearing a John Carver mask. Lizzie tears her flesh and manages to escape, but she is unable to use her phone because of the blood on her hands. With no options left, she rushes out through the back door, attempting to get into her vehicle. But unfortunately, the sinister killer has already been waiting for her. He pursues her in her vehicle, and slams her against a dumpster, cutting her in half. Turns out she is the same woman who killed Amanda by inadvertently striking her with a shopping cart. The next morning, a huge crowd gathers outside the Wright Mart store, when they discover the lower half of Lizzie's body has been placed on the top, horrifying everyone. Meanwhile, Sheriff Eric begins an investigation, and suspects that the murder is connected to the riots that happened at the Wright Mart store last Thanksgiving. When he and the forensic expert check the diner's CCTV footage, they are shocked to find the killer wearing a John Carver mask. Elsewhere at school, Evan gets panicked when the mysterious John Carver account has posted a photo of Lizzie's mutilated body, and tagged him and his friends in it. Jessica then realizes that all of their names are written on the dinner table. She calls her dad, explaining about the murder incident and the creepy Instagram posts, but Thomas Wright refuses to be intimidated, and says that the Black Friday sales will proceed as planned. In the next scene, Sheriff Eric calls the group to the police station for interrogation. He requests Jessica to confide in him any clues that she may have, but Jessica doesn't say anything at the moment. Outside, she runs into Bobby, who is back in town to help his uncle. Bobby reveals that when he broke his arm, he blamed Jessica for taking him to the store. That's why he ghosted her for an entire year, but now he feels bad about it. Jessica then reveals that she has some secret information. Her stepmother, Kathleen, was the one who deleted the security footage, fearing they might face lawsuits. However, there is still backup footage in her dad's office and she plans to retrieve it. During this, Ryan suddenly arrives, and gives Jessica a kiss on her cheeks, and this obviously makes Bobby a bit jealous. Later, we see Manny, one of the security guards who was present on that fateful night. He actually fled the scene as soon as the chaos began. Currently, he is packing his stuff to leave on a vacation, as he is scared of the eerie murders happening in town. But just when he is about to depart, he finds a John Carver mask placed on his couch. Alarmed, he grabs a bat, and tries to intimidate the killer. However, his tough talk doesn't work. After keeping the guard's head, the psychopath feeds the eyewitness to the horrible event before he departs. 
Later on, the killer places Manny's head on the dinner table, along with Lizzie's upper half body. The next morning, Jessica is shocked to see that the killer has posted a picture of his victims on his Instagram account. Fearing that she might be the next victim, she promptly retrieves the security footage from her dad's computer, and will hand it over to the sheriff, while we see Ryan stalking her house outside. Following this, we are taken to Lonnie, the same kid from Hanover School who instigated the stampede, he is currently training his juniors in the gym. A while later, he and his girlfriend go to a quiet room to have some fun. Trying to do something different, she gets on a trampoline and begins to strip down. But then, the killer twists Lonnie's neck from behind, while the girlfriend is unaware of this. Unfortunately, she also meets a grim fate when the killer sticks a knife under the trampoline, it stabs her multiple times, killing her brutally. In the next scene, Sheriff Eric learns about the killings, and warns the teens to be safe. Evan and Gabby then head to their class to retrieve their backpacks, while Jessica waits for them outside. Unfortunately, the killer shows up and knocks the two out. Jessica then receives a message from Gabby, telling her to come to them. When our girl goes to check on them, the killer shows up and attacks her, so she makes a run for it. She rushes inside a science lab and hides. Soon, the killer also enters the room, determined to finish her off, while Jessica is hiding herself among several mannequin heads. The killer eventually finds Jessica, but she manages to blind him temporarily using a hairspray. After this, she runs outside, where the sheriff and the others calm her down. She begs Eric to save her friends, but the killer appears to be long gone. Following the incident, Scuba realizes that the police are of no good. So that night, he takes Jessica to a local drug dealer's house to get a gun. He wants to confront the killer and finish him off. Elsewhere, Yulia's concerned father has decided to relocate her, he has stationed a guard outside, and they are packing their belongings to leave. But despite all the security, the killer still manages to infiltrate the house, killing both the guard and Yulia's father with a silenced gun. Meanwhile, Yulia is on a video call with her boyfriend Scuba, right when this happens. After stabbing Yulia's ears, the killer grabs her phone and waves at Scuba. Fearing that Yulia might get killed, Scuba and Jessica rush to her residence. But upon arrival, they find the killer holding his knife at her neck. Scuba points his gun at the killer, but he soon realizes that the safety pin is still on, and the killer throws Yulia on a buzzsaw that was being used for the renovation of the home, killing her on the spot. Now that several people have already been killed by this mysterious person, the cops decide to execute a risky plan. They want to lure him out during the Thanksgiving parade, by using Jessica and her family as bait. Kathleen is hesitant at first, but they eventually agree as this is the only way to stop this madness. The scene then cuts to the parade where Jessica's family and Scuba are seen on the back of a truck. Police are stationed everywhere so that they can catch the killer when he shows up. They are expecting him to wear his classic John Carver mask, but things get tricky when not only the killer wears the mask. But to everyone's shock, the killer shows up as a creepy clown, and decapitates a turkey mascot. He also throws smoke bombs into the crowd, causing absolute mayhem. Jessica's family and Scuba also try to flee, but the killer enters their car, tranquilizes them, and takes them away. Afterwards, when Kathleen wakes up, she realizes that the killer is a good chef, as he's preparing her like a turkey. When he is distracted while checking the oven, she manages to run away from the room. Upstairs, she tries to find a way to escape, but no luck, so she continues to hide behind a wall, while the killer is looking for her. Thinking that she's not there, he leaves. But then all of a sudden, the killer stabs the wall with his garden fork. Unfortunately, the psycho eventually apprehends her, and throws her into an oven, where she is cooked to death. After a while, the killer brings Kathleen's roasted corpse to the dinner table, which makes everyone scream in fear. Jessica, her dad, Scuba, Evan and Gabby are all tied up to their respective chairs, and they are forced to watch the killer continue with his madness. At first, he grabs a hammer, turns on his Instagram live feed, and brutally bashes Evan to death. Congratulations Evan, you're a star. He then cuts a piece of Kathleen's roasted flesh, and attempts to feed it to Thomas Wright. 
As all of this is happening, Jessica frees herself using a special ring she got from the local drug dealer. She then secretly hands it over to Scuba, who manages to become free as well, and the two attack the killer, luring him away from the dinner table. After running through some tunnels, they reach the John Carver house, and Scuba gets his arm slashed, while Jessica has already escaped through the back door. And so, the killer follows her, leaving an injured Scuba behind. She runs through the forest, and eventually arrives at the town center, where Sheriff Eric is lying unconscious in the middle of the road. As she tries to tend to him, she suddenly spots someone with John Carver mask entering a nearby warehouse. Jessica assumes it's the killer, so she grabs the sheriff's gun, and goes inside. To her utmost shock, she finds that the person is Bobby. Just then, the sheriff comes running to her and asks her to get out. Three gunshots are then heard from inside, and Eric mentions that he fired at Bobby, but he managed to get away. Following this, the cops show up, and inform Jessica that her friends and dad have been rescued. After all the cops leave, Eric promises to find Bobby and apprehend him. But at this point, Jessica suddenly notices brambles on his shoes. These are the same plants she came across when she was running through the woods. This makes her realize that the killer is none other than the sheriff himself. Here Sheriff Eric finally learns that he has been exposed, so he decides to reveal the entire story. Eric explains that after the death of his wife, he started having an affair with Amanda. She made him very happy, and got him out of depression. Amanda was even pregnant with his child, and was planning to divorce Mitch, but their promising future came to an abrupt end on that fateful night at Wright Mart store. Filled with vengeance, Eric then planned to kill everyone who was responsible for Amanda's death. He also reveals that he was planning to frame Bobby as the killer, but the boy managed to strike him in the head and run away leaving him unconscious on the road. As the sheriff continues with his confession, Jessica reveals that she's live streaming everything from her phone. Eric then tries to tranquilize her, but Bobby arrives just in time, and saves her. The two run inside the warehouse, while the sheriff is pursuing them with his classic axe. Jessica then diverts his attention by throwing something in another direction, after which she turns on a gas cylinder, and it starts inflating a large balloon, which is combustible. They quickly get to a nearby car, but just as they're about to get away, Eric attaches the vehicle cable to a building pole, stopping the car from moving. And when the killer approaches them, Jessica decides to execute her ultimate move, she uses a makeshift gun and shoots at the balloon. Hey, Sheriff! This causes an explosion so big that the sheriff is thrown away, killing him. In the aftermath of the incident, Bobby is taken away in an ambulance, and Jessica reunites with Ryan, Gabby, and Scuba. Before the film ends, we learn that the authorities are unable to find the sheriff's remains, leading them to believe he was incinerated in the explosion. Okay guys, thanks for watching. See you again in the next video.